The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the ACEC Civil 3D webinar. Uh, my name is Keith Suwinski. I'm the WizDot Civil 3D Implementation Engineer. And before I hand it over to Eric Arneson for uh, the feature presentation, I just have a few update items to share. Uh, first, we released a Civil 3D uh, config package uh, update on Monday. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to point out about that update. Uh, first, I want to apologize uh, for the for uh, the delay on getting that update out. Um, we've been waiting for our uh, programming contractor to deliver our rebuilt reports, and uh, we, we still don't have those reports, so um, we, we decided we're going to release that update anyway without them. Um, so again, this update does not include those rebuilt reports that we've been working on, uh, but a couple other things to note. Uh, the Wiz.Tools ribbon has been retired. Um, you'll only see a Wiz.Sheets and a Wiz.Design ribbon now. And the reports uh, that we have in Civil 3D have been moved to a Wiz.Toolbox. Uh, the reason for that is we want the reports to be uh, in the same location as the Autodesk reports. So when you're thinking reports, you always go to the same location. You go to the toolbox. Also, one of the new reports we issued, the alignment report, um, one of the prerequisites for that report is it must be run from the toolbox. So instead of having one in the toolbox and have others in the ribbon, uh, they're all in one location. Uh, real quick, I'll just show what that looks like in Civil 3D. Um, as you can see, we only have Wiz.Design and Wiz.Sheets. Um, anything that was on the Wiz.Tools ribbon uh, was either redundant um, or it was a report, and again, we moved the reports uh, to a Wiz.Toolbox. Also in the Wiz.Toolbox, you'll find uh, the STMS translator if you're a user of those. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we uh, redid the um, Wiz.Earthwork report macro. It's no longer inside of Civil 3D. It runs um, from the Wiz.Civil 3D apps. So if you click on that, you'll see an Earthwork uh, ribbon and, or excuse me, a tab. And uh, the advantage of having this in Wiz.Civil 3D apps is it's not version specific anymore. So we have one Earthwork uh, macro and uh, you can use XML files from Civil 3D 2016, 2018, 2020, whatever. It, they can all be run through this single Earthwork um, XML uh, processing tool. Uh, the, the, the Earthwork report basically works the same as it did before. Again, it's just in Civil 3D apps. Um, you should notice some um, improved, some improvements with the uh, formatting of the output. Um, we worked with um, some uh, Civil 3D users and uh, hopefully uh, incorporated some improvements uh, to that formatting that everybody will like. Uh, jumping back into the PowerPoint. Uh, again, uh, take a look at that update. There's many other improvements, uh, all listed in the what's new file on the Civil 3D knowledge base. Um, uh, there's a lot of things people have been patiently waiting for, so hopefully that update will be useful to you. Second, uh, Civil 3D 2020. Uh, we're moving along. Uh, we're on schedule with Civil 3D 2020. Our plan is to uh, begin doing some user testing uh, in January. Uh, any WizDot internal staff uh, that are using Civil 3D 2018 uh, should have received uh, a survey this morning. Uh, um, just fill out that survey to let us know if you have any interest in doing some testing for us. Uh, any consultants out there that are looking to do testing for Civil 3D 2020, uh, please send me an email and uh, we'll get you on a list of potential testers. We do want to keep the testing, both internal and external, uh, the, the pool of individuals somewhat limited because uh, that's just that if we have too many people it's 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 much too time consuming and difficult to make sure everybody gets updated with the final patches uh, once the the final version of our civil 3d package is complete uh, but we do want to get a cross section of individuals uh, people from design uh, plans production plats survey all disciplines involved in this uh, one of the focus points of the testing will be um, our templates uh, we, as of now, we are going forward with uh, implementing reference templates. Uh, you'll see on the PowerPoint, I do have a few question marks there, only because we want to make sure testing is successful with the reference templates uh, before we say for sure we're actually going to implement them. There's a few things we're 
not completely comfortable with, and we want to just make sure everything is working uh, the way it should. As far as release timeline for Civil 3D 2020, uh, a few prerequisites before we release. Uh, first, it, we are not going to release any time before the February 1st PSNE. Uh, that's because we don't want to have any disruption to, pro to the project delivery schedule. Uh, second prerequisite is we want Civil 3D 2020.3 released from Autodesk. We don't have an exact date for that, um, but we want to have that incorporated before we release our package. Uh, so that's not to say that you know on February 2nd it's coming out. We're just saying that at some point after February and the 2020.3 release is out, um, that's when you can start looking for for the uh, R2020 package. So for WizDot staff, once Civil 3D 2020 is ready for us, um, we are actually going to be replacing Civil 3D 2018, meaning that if you have a Civil 3D 2018 project now, you will uh, use you will use Civil 3D 2020 moving forward. Um, the, there's not a DWG format change. We are not changing any of, any of our Civil 3D plotting standards. Um, this is basically, um, you just open up your DWG files with 2020 and move forward. Uh, there's no migration process for the DWG files. Um, it's sort of synonymous with uh, something like a Word update. Uh, you just open up your your uh, Word documents in a new version of Word. Uh, in this case, you'll be opening up your DWG files in a new version of Civil 3D. Um, the Civil 3D download, downloader and updater will continue to work for all versions of 2016, 2018, and 2020. Um, it'll support all of those. Although uh, moving forward after 2020, we probably will be uh, focusing our updates only on 2020. Uh, if there's anything major or uh, that you know serious issues that need to be a, be addressed, um, we we can we can go back and do that for 2016 and 2018. But uh, updates moving forward would be focused on 2020. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Eric Arneson for his presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. All right, thanks, Keith. Okay, hey, uh, Mitch, you there? Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right, awesome. Uh, Mitch is gonna be uh, running uh, the chat for me today. So if you guys have anything that uh, just got to ask or want to wanna pipe in, throw it there, it'll get noticed. Uh, Mitch, you might need to holler at me if you need me to stop. Um, and now that you, uh, you can see my screen, I'm feeling pretty fashionable today. Can I share my fashion with you, Mitch? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So, so Deb was taking my pictures and she wanted a uh, debonair shot that's that's me being debonair and uh that that's my action shot she said do something exciting at the whiteboard um so you know that's pretty great you got any pictures you want to share with me i'm good okay <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to i don't need to share anything all right i i guess we'll move on then okay so if you're on our uh knowledge base resource file updates you should have got an email uh, early um, Monday morning uh, with the updates. We not only updated a lot of resource files, uh, but quite a few uh, pieces in the knowledge base. And you can always find uh, what's going on in the um, KB updates page. And what I'm gonna be working off of here is mostly down here. I just wanted to show we we have we've been adding a bunch of our sheet examples uh, to the knowledge base. Uh, the list is right here. Well, this isn't the total list. Total list is right here. So these are going to be replacing the example uh, file or sheets that are in the FDM. Uh, we've been working on those. The PDFs link you right to them. And we've got some level of training for each of them. So um, some of them are full-blown video and data set, work through it all on your own. Uh, some of them are more, you know, this is pretty easy if you know, you know, CADs and our, our layout uh, will point out a couple of 
tips and tricks and uh, you should be good to go that way. Um, so what I'm talking about today is down in our cross sections area. So if you want to walk through this on your own or see the recorded videos, uh, we're gonna be going through uh, cross sections, how to control size and layout, and adding a section view to an existing group. So this is something that comes up uh, pretty common. And generally speaking, what happens is Civil 3D is tries its best to give you a section view that it thinks is gonna fit, and sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it gives you one section view on one sheet, and you got eight sheets, and you're like, what the heck's going on? So the idea today is that we go through, I'm gonna go through and show you the controls that you can uh, tweak to either get sheets to fit, you know, get more sections on your sheets, uh, get them to fit better, uh, basically get through the layout. It, it kind of starts in civil understanding that uh, sections, sample lines live under alignments and that the sections and view groups live under those for it. So uh, the things that are important to understand there is that the there can't be sections on different alignments in the same section view group. You're gonna need a separate section view group for each uh, basically alignment that you have. And since the sample lines are based on the alignment, they have what's called a swath width, which is the thing that I always hate to say because I'm always afraid my tongue's gonna get tied up around it. But what it means for you is that doing sections has to include the baseline, all right? So you can go, you can zero out on baseline and go all left or all right, but you can't do something where you're like negative 150 to negative 10 on your offsets and call that a section. You have to include the baseline in it. Just, you know, depending on how your job is laid out, it can impact uh, how you're gonna get your sections done. So section view group is where all the good details are at. Um, and this 2A through D are, are your basics for getting a section view group put together. Obviously you got a station range, how far is it gonna go? Uh, there's a section view style and cross section template. That's generally where your scale is set and that's what's gonna drive how wide or how tall your sections are gonna end up. Your offset range is generally inherited from your sample line. So that's, am I 75 foot left and right? Am I 150 foot left and right? And I've got a little table that kind of goes through the standard uh, dimensions and settings, but you got to understand the scale to be able to fit the real world dimensions onto our paper sizes. Um, generally speaking, it's, it's a good practice to set your sample lines correct and then just let this float. You, you can tweak it if you need to or want to, but uh, it's just easier if you can leave it automatic. Now elevation range is what gets into how tall is it going to make this sheet. And you, you've got two options here. One is automatic, and that's basically going to look at all of the sections, all of the all of the surfaces that you're sampling and make a section view big enough for that. Um, that can be good and bad. If you've got, if your existing ground is a lot different than your proposed work. So say you're on like a 20 foot fill and you're only doing like a, a rehab or something, it's going to show that whole 20 feet, uh, whether you need it or not because you sampled existing ground and it's going to try its best to show everything for you. Um, elevation range can be uh, user specified. So this is getting into, uh, are, my sh are my sections going to be 20 feet tall? Or are my sections going to be 30 feet tall? Uh, these, this can be uh, good for controlling the number of sections per sheet. Okay, So you can kind of do the math and say, okay, I'm at one to 10, I've got 20 foot sections, I can fit this many sections on my sheet. The critical thing to know about both of these is that they both have a major interval 
that drives where they're going to start off at. Okay, and that's typically in 10 foot intervals. So if you have a section that is like the existing ground starts at 1169, it's going to start at 1160 because it's got that major 10 foot interval that's at the whole 10 foot marker. So it's never going to start at you know, 68 or 65, which might, you know, kind of maximize your sections. So you gotta understand that when you look at your sections and, and the tweaks that might be useful to get something to look better. Um, and this is just getting into the user specified, the different options. You can follow just a section. Uh, generally speaking, using the from mean elevations is gonna be a good, option. Uh, follow a section can be kind of useful if you like follow um, your proposed and, and you really want to just kind of zero in and you've got that scenario where that I was talking about where you're existing is way off from where your proposed is. How, however, if you do follow your proposed sections, if you have like an existing only section, it's going to zero out elevation because it's going to say, you told me to follow proposed. I can't find it on this section. I'm just going to zero out and give and throw my hands up. Okay. So that's also something that people run into when you run in sections. Maybe you cut a sample line at a section to show existing, but there's no work there. Um, that can impact what you end up with in your sections. All right. How am I doing? Nobody's. All right, good. Um, doing good, doing good here. All right, I'm just trying to keep you awake, Mitch. I know it's, you're falling asleep underneath all that snow. By the way, if you're ready to complain about winter yet, I was up in Superior last week. Unless you live north of eight, you really can't <laughs> complain because it might be freezing today, but uh, at least you're not under like three feet of snow at the same time, so. Um, all right, so for our cross-section sheets, uh, this is a little table about what I was telling you about the details to understand. On our on the WizDot files, we do 11 by 17 sheets, and the area that's devoted to sections is 15.75 inches wide and 9.75 inches uh, high. That's how much space you have to work with and we have a half inch buffer between the sections, okay? So you can have labels that show up outside of the section view because it's really just looking at the lines, it's not looking at the labels. So we gotta give a little bit of buffer between sections so that they uh, aren't overlapping each other. This is a little table that I put together here just to give people an understanding about those section heights and our common scales. So um, this is on a one to five, you can go a total of 75 feet wide. And if you're a 10 foot high section, you can get four sheets. And if you're a 20 foot high section, you can get two sheets. And it just kind of goes down the list here. So uh, max swath width based on your scale and the number of sections that you're gonna fit also based on the scale. So that's, of course, a, a critical piece that you got to decide kind of ahead of time, or maybe you run your sections and you say, man, I really can't see what's going on, or it's too narrow, or it's too wide. Um, this is why we've got all these different options here, but even in the, all these different options, you know, depending on how wide your section is, you can be kind of halfway in between two, and it's, it can be tricky to fit them correctly. Um, this isn't a complete list, by the way, you know, there's different possibilities. Um, but if you, if you get into tweaking section, section view heights, um, so a lot of times, like if you're in a, I wouldn't go underneath a five foot increment in those, or else you're going to be kind of off of, um, you know, the grid, right? So if you're, if you're at one inch equals 10 feet, then a five foot increment is gonna be a half inch. 
if you're if you're down to one inch equals 20 feet then you're getting into the quarter inch range and we don't even major grid on that so um five foot or or getting down to your half whatever a half inch is for your scale is recommended because that's gonna that's gonna line up with the grids that we have all right enough talk let's do a little uh some of the 3d action here so what i have here is just a tiny little corridor um i've got two beam guard eats post one five and nine and they're offset a little bit so i've got a cross section file i've sampled my sections i've sampled my corridor i've got an alignment in here that is what everything is hanging off of so i'm i'm kind of in a good start place for building some cross sections so we'll do that to start us off here off of the home tab in the profile and section views i'm going to expand section views and go to create multiple views this is going to be your most common uh, creating sections run here and this is where we get into the dialog box for section view groups so i'm gonna make sure i've got my correct alignment and sample line group i've only got one for each station range i'm going to leave that automatic if i had a real long job and i was just doing like a stage or a, you know one chunk of it i can i can pick down to a station range and it's only going to give me sections for for that range um i'm going to do 10 by 10 for this one and always 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 whenever you're doing cross-section sheets make sure your uh, annotation scale down here is the same as what scale you're picking or else that is the easiest way to make ugly cross-section sheets is not having your anna scale uh, matching up with what you're trying to build for section placements i'm going to use the one the 10 by 10 template and i'm going to plot them bottom to top offset range i'm going to leave automatic this is the one that's going to drive off of the sample or the the swath widths and elevation range i'm going to try doing uh i'm going to try it automatic see what it gives me okay for section display options generally speaking you're not going to want to label anything here the labels are going to come from the corridor okay that's dealing with the code set style and the point codes and all that happiness so generally speaking you want to leave no labels on the surfaces and the corridor uh, surfaces are double checking that we've got the that the surfaces are matching up with the corridors that we built and the corridor is going to be giving us our offset elevation labels that we can read we don't have any data bands so we can create some section views here so i'm going to kind of find a place over here that hopefully won't land on any other lines and drop it in and so i've got some different colors and weights going on but generally speaking we've got uh our six cross sections here so i've got uh, my post one five and nine down the left and flip-flopping between the posts one, five, and nine on the right. Um, this isn't too bad. Um, looks like I've got some space to work with. Uh, if I can tweak these up here, um, and this section is looking super, super tall. If I zoom in to here, uh, that situation that I was talking about just outside of the major 10-foot intervals, is what's happening here. So I've got 1190 and my existing ground is just a hair above 1190, okay? So it's giving me a whole nother inch. And then of course that pushes up higher and pushes the next section onto the next sheet. So I'm gonna want to fix this a little bit. Um, it looks like I'm kinda, so this is a, uh, what do we got here? So that's one, got some 20 foot sections, mostly 20 foot sections, it looks like. So 
if I wanted to do a kind of mass change to this whole set of sections, I can do that with, within my section view group. So if I expand, I can either select a section and get to it up here, or I can right click off of the section view group and go to properties. I'm gonna go into my view group properties for my section views. If I kind of expand these, this is that this is where I can get back to all of those uh, settings that I had changed. So offset and elevation is the is the little button that I want to get to here. Offset I'm going to leave alone and elevation range. Now I'm going to change to user specified and I'm going to change this to 20 feet. So that's going to force every section to be 20 feet high. And I'm going to say follow a mean of all elevations. So somehow it's going to calculate where that mean is and then base off of those major grids and, and figure out my sections for me. So I'm going to say OK twice. And it's going to reset. Now it hasn't reshuffled the cards, if you will. It hasn't added that fourth one up to the top. But if I right click the section view group, I've got a command called update section view layout. And there I was able to fit four sections onto that first sheet. Um, so that is kind of the easiest way to kind of force all of your sections to be one way. Um, you can also get down to changing single sections. So if I go over into this area here, um, let's take a look at this last one here. I've got a 20 foot high section, that's great, but I'm really kind of bumping up to the top of the section view. And, and maybe I wanna try and kind of bring that section down, kind of center it there. I can select this section view, or I can try to select the section view. Sometimes it's easiest to hover over the, the station text. That'll give you a grip that's not sitting on top of the grid. So now instead of the whole group, I'm going to go to the single section view properties and open that up. I'm going to check into my elevations here. Now, I've got an 1170 to 1190 going on. Um, and what I want to do is I want to bring that, um, I want to bring the stations down. So I want to put some elevation above it. So I'm going to change this over to an 1175 to an 1195. So this is not, I could also change the height here. I could, I could change it to a 15 foot section or a 10 foot section. But what I'm really doing right here is I'm just shifting where the section lands in my section view. So I'm gonna drag this over, see if I, we can see a little happen and boom. Okay, so I was able to shift it. Now, as long as I don't delete this section view and the group, this will stay. I can add sections later, I can, I can reshuffle whatever. This, this manual change, as long as I don't delete the group, is going to stick with this run of stations, uh, excuse me, sections. I'm going to say OK, and I want to show you two. Um, let's say for this one down here, I wanted to bring it down to a 15 foot high section. OK, I, I say, you know what, this, this bottom data, it's it's useless. It's starting at 1170, but 1175 is more than, you know, comfortable for this section. I can do my select it, set it, and I'm going to set, uh, what do I got going here? I might have been messing with this file earlier, but I'm going to change this from an 1175 to an 11. I'm going to leave 1190. And we're going to go 1180 for the bottom. So that should suck it in. So I can hit apply. Oh, the wrong one selected. Try this again. So 
So I want to bump up the bottom, 11.75. Okay, there it goes. Okay, the thing that I wanted to show you is I, I got, since I took a half inch out of that section, I've got a full inch between. I can do that update section layout and get them close together again. So obviously on this two sheet thing, it's not a big deal. You got a run of 10, 20, how many ever sheets of this, you know, you can add up to pages of sections um, just by these little tweaks. And again, um, these elevation changes, uh, the width changes that I'm gonna show you, they're going to stick in these sections as long as you don't, if you delete the section view group, you're gonna lose all this stuff. But these are a one change and they'll stick with the sections as long as it remains intact. Okay, so I went from like three kind of, or two sheets that were, um, you know, really using a lot of paper to now I'm showing everything. Um, I've got like one and a half sheets. If I was, if I was running a bunch of sections, I could be you know, really chopping this down to get more dense information into less sheets uh, on my plan set. Okay, so that's dealing with the kind of height and the top and bottom. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how to deal with uh, the left and right stuff, okay? So this is a classic example where for you know, stakeout, I don't need this whole section. You know, I, I need post one, five, and nine. I don't need the opposite side. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to change the width of your sample lines. So I can select my sample line and I can grip edit it. Um, I'm a little uh, anal retentive about this stuff. I usually like to type it in down here to make sure I'm not snapping on something weird. So if I go into my sample line group SLG2 here, if I click on my sample lines, <clears throat> it's going to give me a list of all my sample lines and I scroll over and I can get to my offsets on the, on the right side here. So if I wanted that first one to be a left only, I can highlight the right offset and zero it out. Okay. I can do, I can unselect and just to show I can select. And if I grab onto the arrow grip, not the, not the square, but the arrow, I can also stretch that and minimize it down. And as long as that's all in the same file, you'll get it to show up like this. Now, what'll happen is if you, if you go left only, your, your station value, which is on the right side of the sheet, is gonna slam over to where that section view starts. As long as you know that, it's you know not a big deal to uh, deal with that. And I can pretty easily go through and do that. And that's all gonna update in the file as I work here. One more grip edit, that's all I wanna do, all right. And just to show you that it will run like that. Now, I'm gonna really mess with you. So we are on 10 to 10. And if I go back to my, my little web page here, it says I'm 150 feet wide. Okay, that means I can make a section that's 150 feet wide. Well, I think I'll go try that. So. I'm gonna change this first sample line. Um, I'm gonna do it down in here. So instead of 75 feet, I'm gonna make it 150 feet. So now I've got 150 foot left, <clears throat> excuse me, and 150 foot right. Escape, that looks great. Huh, that doesn't look so great. Well, I'll, I'll go do that little, uh, update layout thing that he told me about that that'll probably fix me oh yeah that that looks awesome that's exactly what i want right um obviously no so here's the deal the the default setting that wiz.sheets run off of is center line the center lines line up okay so your zero offset are going to line up on a sheet what i forced to happen here 
is I, it said, Civil 3D said, you know what, I can fit that section on the sheet, but when I go to the next section, I can't make the baselines line up, so I'm gonna kick it to another sheet, all right? So that's exactly what you're seeing here. I've got a baseline of zero way over on the right side of the sheet. My next one, it flops over to the left side of the sheet, and it says, well, obviously you should be happy. Um, if you run into this kind of a scenario where you are going, you, you're trying to fit a ton of information on two sheets, or you know, a, a real good example of this is maybe I've got one or two sections that are just way wider than the rest of them, but I still wanna fit them on the same set of sections. I can do two sample lines like this, and instead of being five feet apart, you make them, oh, I don't know, a 10th of a foot apart so that they look like they're the same section. And the trick is you gotta change the layout. So I'm gonna go into the properties and I'm going to go, I think, I think this one's in the group plot style, if I remember right. Yes. Thank you. Glad to hear you're still awake, Mitch. I'm so I'm going to yet. Okay. I'm going to go by page bottom to top, and I'm going to pick right aligned. I think we only did the right aligned one, because that's going to keep your right side stations um, lined up. If we did left side, it's going to auto move around on you. So I'm gonna click okay, okay. And if I go back to my sheets, you can see it fit them both on. It's going to be my zero for this station. It's gonna be way over the right. My zero for the next station, it's gonna be way over the left, but they both fit on the same sheet. And I'm not doing, I'm doing one sheet instead of three sheets, okay? So if you can imagine both, you know, both of these samples, you can't have a sample line that's identical station in the same sample line group, but it can be just that, just that little bit ahead. And sometimes it, it's, you know, it's just one of the tricks to know um, to get sections looking like how you want to. Let me take a little quick look here. So you can you can set the that height by uh, a group or a single section, and you can let the let the sample line widths uh, drive your left and right sides. I think that's all that I had for that one. So. Between those uh, tweaks, um, it's pretty easy to get uh, sections looking like how you want. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to uh, show you guys, because it comes up all the time, is, is adding a sample line to an existing section uh, view group. Um, I think a couple of versions ago, you used to have to do this copy thing, and it was kind of weird. Um, I don't know exactly when they fixed it, but at least in 18 and forward, they fixed it. So let's say I wanted to add a, a section just in the middle of these here. Um, what I'm gonna do is go to, uh, I'm in my home tab, profile and section views panel, sample lines. I've gotta select an alignment to work off of. I'm gonna try and select an alignment. Okay, and that's gonna open up this little dialog here. So I've got an active, you wanna make sure that you're, the sample line group that you want to add to is active. I've got that here. And I want to uh, create sample line group is, is not a command that is going to get activated here, as long as I've got sample line group two active and I've got add a station as my command here, I can click on this and add a station. So I'm just gonna click here 
it's going to want a left swapped width. I'm going to center this one, so I'm going to go 75 left, 75 right. So left swath width is 75, and right swath width is 75. Escape. Okay. That looks great. That In model space, that looks like exactly what I want. But if I go over to my section view group, I might need to look at my notes for this one because I don't remember. Can you type the station in? You can type the station in. Yep, so it doesn't have to be a click and snap type of thing. You can you can type that value in when you're entering it. I'm going to go to the KB and see what I did wrong. I was expecting to get the individual section groups, maybe because I had the section uh, group selected, it threw it right in there. Let's do a right click and update. Let's see. Did you create a new section view for it? Or did you just create the sample, create the sample line? Maybe I did. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I still got only the six sections. You have a sample line though, right? Yeah, yeah. it's right here. Let's, I think let's you have see to create this. I think you have to create a section view from that sample line first. Oh, that's right. That was it. All right. So that was, thank you. So instead of create multiple sections, so I've got a sample line and it is in my list here. That's okay. Now I'm getting squared away. So here's my, I used to have six sample lines. Now I have seven. These just happen to be ordered in name and they just get named in order of creation. But if you can see down here, this is the, the new one because it's 399 plus 63. And, and this last one here is a 400. So it's, it's in the sample line is in the group. Now I need to make a new section view. So I'm gonna open up my section views and say create a single section view and it's going to give me all that same stuff. I still got to give it all the settings and everything. Um, I'm going to leave everything default. And yep, that looks fine. And I create a section view. And it says identify origin. Well, what the hey, okay? I've got some labels on. I missed those. But um, obviously, this section view isn't talking with the rest of my group here. I can select this one and clean it up a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna go to my section view properties. I definitely, my elevations look a little huge here. So I'm gonna tighten that up to an 1175 to maybe an 1195. And I'm gonna go check my sections. I got labels happening somewhere. Pull out and see my, for all these, I do not want any labels going on. So I'm just gonna turn those off, import a no label set for existing ground, for datum. And final top. That's looking a lot better. So, so now I've got a shorter section. I'm not seeing any grid. The grids are in the um, sheets. Okay, so that's why I'm not seeing them. But if you'll notice, now that I've got the separate section view, under section, so I'm still under my sample line group two, under my highway 25. And under section view groups, I've got a list of individual section views, okay? This is going to happen whenever 
you do this. You're gonna add these section views. These you can right click and do a move to section view group, okay? So you can go through, do your roadway sections. You can come back and do your pipe sections and do them individually and right click and move them into the group. Select the right one. I'm gonna zoom out here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So it added them, it reset them, and again, put them in station order, uh, fit them in where they should be. So most of this is pretty dynamic, automatic. One of the things that, uh, a couple of things that I wanna mention on particularly this, um, you can add labels in through the code set style or you can do manual uh, section view labels on top of here. If you do the, the section view labels, they will ride with these section views, even after you add new sections or you change things around, what have you. You do not want, and, and I think it was in 18 they added, if I add M text or a line or you know AutoCAD basic objects in model view, those will even ride with everything else going on. The thing that will not ride <laughs> is if you do line work or text in paper space and put it on top and say, there's my note. If you do these little ads and changes, they don't know anything about section views and they're gonna be orphaned afterwards. So uh, you definitely wanna use section views or do labeling on the section view so that those uh, keep organized with everything else. The last thing that I'll mention is when you do the uh, output create section sheets wizard, that will create layouts for all of your section views at the time, but it is not dynamic. In other words, if you go through and add your pipes and you add two sheets to a list of 50 sheets, it's not going to automatically create new, two new layouts for you. You've got to add those manually to make sure that you've got layouts for all of your section sheets. Okay. I'm not talking about labels today, but labels is always a good topic for cross sections. We've got a bunch of stuff on the KB for telling you how to manipulate code set styles and, and all that fun stuff to get your elevation offset labels going. Um, we've even got some new uh, custom, custom labels that are possible. Um, but that's what I got on my list today. How are we doing on uh, anything coming in on the chat, Mitch? Yeah, one quick um, tip on duplicating uh, section views again, or make adding another section view to the group is you can do a copy of the sample line and then you have to drag the new sample line to where you want to put the uh, the new cross section, and then uh, that'll add that section view to the group, I believe. Yeah, it's not okay. an AutoCAD copy. It's part. Of, if you select a sample line, you select select any sample line, and yeah. then grab that diamond grip in the middle, and then go yeah. to the command line. Did you click on it? I'll okay. go to the command line. And I see a copy. Yep. Click on that. Put it where you want it, and then that'll automatically insert a section for you. You have to do the update group layout, but sure. Does it retain any of the properties? Do, does it retain any? Oh, does yep. it retain all of those properties? Oh, yep, okay. all the properties of the source one. All right. So that's which one did I? I think it was this one I added, right? All right. So I can also select this new one that I added. And I've off the contextual ribbon, I've got to create section view. You don't need that. It, it already created it. You just update what? your group layout. Shut the door. Just update your group layout and it should show up. There it is. More magic. Okay, cool. So when you select the sample line, it's like it's selecting the sample line and the section view all at the same time. Uh, I'll just, we'll leave it at magic. Okay, so that's cool. 
Ta-da. Well, that's all I've got. Uh, thanks everybody for uh, sitting in. Hope this was useful for you. Stay warm, uh, stay safe, and have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Thanks, sir.